Uh, the benefit, as we talked about before, um, we were able to copy a lot of elements if they're, if they're similar in concept. So I'm going to do just that for, uh, for the caps itself. I'm going to make a copy of this girder, as the caps can be fairly simple uh, with the same stations uh, as a superstructure. So I'll make a copy of that, call it caps. And once I have that created, I have a different girder element with all the properties that are defined as before for the superstructure. Uh, but the way these different elements work is we have fine control of the stationing, the cross sections that are at those stations, and then the variations that we took a look at before. For our purpose, let's go ahead and make a change for the cap. And then we'll get rid of some of these that we don't need. One of the cool aspects of this process is that when we're going through initially to model out a bridge like this, um, just for conceptual purposes, evaluating a couple of different alternatives, we don't have to think of every single thing that Jalpesh has been doing here in advance. We don't have to have all of these stations set up perfectly. We don't have to have pure cap geometry precisely defined. None of this is necessary. Uh, it only becomes necessary once we want to add that level of detail in. And we can go back after the fact and kind of the same way you would in a CAD deliverable, we can systematically refine and add detail, um, clean up geometry, make everything fit perfectly as we move through increasingly detailed phases of design.